Okay, hello everyone. My name is Dave Munger and I'm a librarian with Sacramento Public Library. Welcome to this month's genealogy workshop, Genealogical Resources at the Center for Sacramento History with our speaker, Kim Hayden. Today's session will be recorded and available on our YouTube channel indefinitely. I'll put the link to our YouTube channel in the chat. Again, for questions about future genealogy presentations or to receive a copy of the handout, please email contact at saclibrary.org. I'll also post a copy of the handout to the chat for download. Now I would like to introduce today's speaker, Kim Hayden. Kim Hayden is the Senior Archivist at the Center for Sacramento History, where she has worked since 2017. There, she processes collections, provides reference services, manages the center's social media, and is the committee chair for the annual Sacramento Archives Crawl. Previously, Kim worked at the Computer History Museum for Stanford University Libraries and is a copy editor in News and Marketing. She has a master's degree in Library and Information Science from San Jose University. Her presentation today is Genealogical Resources at the Center for Sacramento History. Thank you for making time for us in your busy schedule, Kim. I will pass the virtual mic to you now. Thanks. Uh, no problem. I am very happy to be here. I am coming to you from my home office and sewing room, as you can see in Rio Linda, where we're currently having a pretty loud thunderstorm, so you might hear some thunder. Um, and yeah, so I will just go ahead and start my presentation. Uh, do you see a presentation? I'm gonna assume that you do. Uh, yes, yes, I do. Awesome. Okay, okay thanks. Mm -hmm. Okay, so um, as Dave said, I am the Senior Archivist at the Center for Sacramento History. Um, I've been there just about seven years, and we are the city and county archives, essentially, and we're a research center open to the public for research. Um, so this... Um, we have a lot of genealogical resources. And so the focus of my talk today is going to be what we have. Um, and this first slide shows off some um, genealogical stuff from one family, um, the Ray family in Sacramento who came here after they were emancipated um, during slavery. Uh, the, the guy in the top left was five years old when he was sold away from the rest of his family. Um, those are two of his brothers on the right. And he reunited with them here in Sacramento um, after someone where he lived in Texas when he was an adult said, I was just in Sacramento and met a guy who looks just like you and has your same name. So he packed up his family and he came out to Sacramento. And um, indeed, that was his family. And they got together and they didn't get along, but that happens. And um, his granddaughter, who's a little girl in the center of the slide next to her parents, she wrote a really great genealogical history of her family based on her own research and on um, stories told from the family. And she donated that along with her family's photos and some papers and artifacts to us. So that's just a little example of some of the genealogical stuff we have um, on one family. So who is the center? Um, has anyone ever been here? I can't see you, so I can't see if you're raising your hand, obviously. Um, we are open uh, two days a week for research. The rest of the time we are there, busy processing collections and getting them organized for researchers. Um, we exist solely to collect historical materials, preserve it, and make it accessible to the public. Um, having it just in a facility where people can't access it is pointless, so we we exist to serve the public and provide access to our material. Um, so we are a city division. So I'm a city of Sacramento employee, but we do also get some funding from the county because we hold their archival material as well. Um, and who am I? I will just give you a quick rundown of me, genealogically speaking. Um, I am from Redding, California. And uh, my family, we know from the DNA tests and from research other people in the family have done. I haven't done much research, honestly, on my own family. Um, we're German, Swiss, French, Scottish, English, Irish, Swedish. And a large chunk of my genealogy, um, my ancestry is German, um, a little more than half. And 
we came from that confusing land known as Prussia. So if anyone else here has Prussia in their genealogy, I feel your pain. It can be hard to um, research because it changed hands many times and borders many times. So where my family is from is today in Luxembourg. Um, but my great, great grandpa, who is in that bottom right photo, um, he came from a town called Monternock and uh, that's their last name as well. It's in Luxembourg today, but uh, his papers that I found online and other people my family have found alternately say he is from Belgium, he is from France, he is from Germany. So um, yeah, they can be hard to uh, to look up. Um, my mom's family was in Shasta Trinity in Siskiyou County since the 1880s. My dad's family is a more recent transplant to California. They came to Shasta County from Montana during the depression. Um, they were one of those um, migrant workers, not working on um, orchards or fruit picking or anything. They were working on dam projects, federal dam projects. They moved from Montana over to, uh, from Fort Peck to Grand Coulee and then down to Shasta Dam in 1940. And that's where they stayed. And my grandpa owned some small businesses there, like little grocery stores you can see in the bottom left. And um, yeah, I left Reading as soon as I could and didn't look back. And everyone from my generation did, unfortunately. But um, we are now spreading our genealogy elsewhere. Um, <clears throat> so what is an archives? Uh, I get this question a lot when I tell people what I do for a living. What is an archive? What is an archivist? Um, and the first thing I say usually is it's a lot like a library, but with historical documents instead of books. And that's somewhat accurate, but very inaccurate. And I'm going to explain the difference. Um, so we're not a library. Um, the material we have in archives is usually one of a kind and unpublished. So it's not a book. It's not a magazine. It's stuff that was created in your day-to-day -day life. So as a city and county archives, we have a lot of government records and those are the records that were created just in government's day-to-day -day work. So the building permit that you had to get to put the deck up on the back of your house, we've got that. You know, um, the, the voter rolls where you sign up to vote, um, your naturalization papers, the meeting minutes from city council and board of supervisors minutes, like that stuff that was just created in the day-to-day -day process of living life and carrying out your business, that's the kind of stuff we collect. So doesn't exist anywhere else. There's no copies of it. This is it. Um, and it's organized very differently from a library. You know, in a library, um, everything is organized by subject. And so say you want to look at some books about dressmaking, they're all going to be around the same area, same shelf, same catalog number um, about. So in the archives, we arrange it by who gave it to us. And we keep it in the mostly in the order they gave it to us in if it has an order if it doesn't we will impose an order on it but so like we get the records from the county coroner they have them organized by person's last name that's how we keep it um so having things organized in that way means that you can't come into the archives and say I want everything about my house you know or I want to see everything about um you know, this person from my background, like my great grandfather, we can find stuff about him or your house or whatever your research topic is, but it isn't necessarily going to be all in one place. There's no like file on your grandpa, you know, but we can find in the court records, we can find, you know, cases that he had like divorce cases or probate cases. Um, we can find his naturalization papers in the naturalizations, um, collection. We can find your building permits for your house. We can also find historic resource surveys on your house. Um, they're all in different collections. And so it's sort of a, a hunt to find these things. And um, it makes it frustrating, fun, all at the same time. You know, it's kind of like you're going on a little treasure hunt. And we help you find these things by creating what we call finding aids. They're basically collection guides. Um, if you go to the Online Archive of California, uh, you will see many, many California institutions have their finding aids and collection guides up there. And we do too. We have over a hundred up there. Um, and they list what's in a collection. 
what the collection's about. And those help you find the things you're looking for. Uh, with the government right. records, it's easier because you know all the stuff from the Superior Court is going to be court cases. You know, all the stuff from the coroner's office is going to be coroner's reports. So um, the other thing about our materials, you can't check it out. So you go to the library, you can get a book. You come to our place, you can look at it in the archives, but you cannot take it with you. Um, and we will work with you to help you find what you're looking for, but we do not go through the material for you. So we might bring four boxes out for you and you have to go through all those folders yourself to find what you're looking for. And we do this because um, one, we don't have time, but two, um, you know what you're looking for and you are looking for the, in the context you're looking for. And, and that's one of the reasons we keep the archival collections in their original order is because they were created in that order and there's a context behind that. And we wanna keep that. So when you come in to do research with us, um, we'll be there with you um, in the reading room and we'll be there to help you and pull things for you, but you'll mostly be sitting quietly by yourself, going through the stuff yourself, looking for what you're looking for. <clears throat> so what does an archivist do? Um, we catalog and organize and preserve the collections and provide access to them. So um, we get a collection in and it is sometimes complete chaos. Sometimes it has some order um, and we just put it into better order or um, keep the order it was in. We rehouse everything into asset-free folders. If it's a photograph, we rehouse it into um, sleeves. You know, we put things into preservation quality housing, we call it, boxes, folders, polyester sleeves, to keep these things safe for a really long time. And we house them in our warehouse, which is our office is essentially a warehouse um, that is climate controlled so that things don't decay and they'll be around as long as possible. Um, we digitize stuff as much as we can, but we have, and compared to what we have in our office, um, in our collection, very little is digitized. Um, you can find a lot of it digitized on the Online Archive of California and on the um, Internet Archive. And I'll talk about that later when I talk about our digital stuff. But we just don't have their time and resources and staffing to digitize as much as would be great. But when we do digitize, we prioritize things that are in preservation wise, bad shape and shouldn't be handled much. So some of our most old um, ledgers and registers, we do those. So people aren't opening and closing them and you know pages are flaking off. Um, and we'll prefer that researchers access the online copy instead of looking at the original. And then we also try to digitize stuff that people wanna access a lot like city directories, um, assessor records, um, so as an archivist, we also help people with the research. Um, we tend to have library science degrees, not history degrees or um, other degrees. Um, like what we do is very specialized. And so we all are huge history nerds, but we're generally not historians. Um, we are helping you, the historian, um, do your research by providing you access to information, but we're not usually doing the research ourselves. There are definitely archivists who do a lot of research and we do research like for our social media posts and for exhibits, um, but we're not like doing research projects all the time. We're mostly organizing stuff so you guys can do the research projects. Um, and then we worked with, with donors to bring in collections um, with our government records. They come in as just government record transfers, but we also collect material from um, everybody. So our collection is to research. Um, well, I'll just go on to my next slide because that's what I'm talking about. Um, so our collection is a mix of government records and private collections. Um, the government records are from the city and the county. As I mentioned, they date back to the beginning, 1848 and 1849. And they include court records, city, um, but basically any department from the city and county. And um, uh, so like water, you know, utilities, property records, city council, ordinances, resolutions, all that stuff. Um, 
And then we also collect private collections. And uh, those come from just regular people like us, um, people, business owners, families, organizations. Um, we have like the Sacramento Bee collection in addition to the McClatchy family McClection. Uh, yeah, I just said McClection. <laughs> That's great. Anyway, um, the McClatchy family uh, ran the bee. Fam well, sort of founded the bee, not really, um, but they ran the bee um, for a very long time. And um, so we have their collection of personal family things in addition to um, the business side of the bee and their other ventures. Um, we also have, um, this segues into our gigantic film and photograph collection. We have millions of photographs and millions of um, feet of film footage. The majority of that film footage is from KOVR and KCRA's archival collections, um, their film archives. So we've got their raw um, film footage, not like their broadcasts, but like the raw footage they shot, uh, in addition to some broadcasts, dating back to the 1950s into the 1980s. And those get used all the time in um, documentaries. And then we also have this giant film uh sorry, photograph collection, which um, a large chunk of that is the Sacramento Bee's photo archives. And that also dates from around the 40s to the to now, actually, we're getting digital photographs from uh, photographers there. And so if a photograph ran in the Bee, we probably have it. We also have um, uh, artifacts. Uh, we this place was started in the 1950s, the Center for Sacramento History. It's gone through many, many name changes um, and focuses, but it was started to collect Sacramento's history and also um, with hopes of being a museum. And we don't have exhibit space, unfortunately. So we've got a lot of artifacts that represent a lot of really cool things in Sacramento and nowhere really to show them. Um, we do have some exhibits up at the Sacramento History Museum. We have stuff sometimes up at City Hall. If you've ever been to the Golden One Center and seen the cool neon signs, those are our neon signs. We have many, many more. Um, we have lots of neat things. And then we also have reference books and reports that people have um, made about the Sacramento area <clears throat> and various Sacramento things. So our, our focus with collecting is to tell a complete story of the city of Sacramento and Sacramento County. And that includes everyone, um, you know, from the people who built the city in the very beginning to, you know, regular everyday people who maybe haven't done that much, you know, that is noteworthy, but they're still noteworthy because they're people and they built the city just by being here. So we're trying to build a comprehensive collection that tells a complete story of this place. So let's get into the types of records we have that specifically people use a lot for genealogy. Um, the government records for sure are the biggest things people use for genealogical research. Um, you know, if you're never in the newspaper or you've never like, like you didn't have a giant business, you're not a famous rich person, you're gonna be in the public records. You know, you might not like be in the media, but you will be found in the public records. You're gonna die one day, you might get married, perhaps you will own property. At the very least, you're gonna die and you're gonna be in there. So um, I think the, the things I pull the most for people and that I, I use most when helping people with genealogical research are court case files. And we have court case files from both city and county courts dating back to 1850 up and through the 1950s. And this includes probate records, which um, includes, you know, that, that, that covers your estate um, when you die, but also it, it covers adoptions and incompetence. Um, so if you were deemed incompetent uh, back in the day, you had a probate record that was basically like a guardianship or an incompetent record. Um, so we have those in the indexes, but we do not have adoption or incompetence um, records. Strike that. We have a very small amount of adoption records from 1914 to 1915. Other than that, we have no adoption records and we do not have um, 
records for if you were deemed incompetent. You can use the index and you can see that the that existed. So if you're like, I think my great grandma was adopted, you could find that in the index and it will say her name, um, who adopted her, the date, the case number, but we don't have the case. Um, we never had the cases. I think they may have been destroyed before they came to us by the county or perhaps the county still has them. I don't know, but they didn't give them to us. Um, I assume for privacy reasons, same with the incompetency records. Um, so, okay, then we have civil cases and um, civil cases are, you know, like business problems or whatever you're suing someone over something that's not a criminal act. Uh, but we use these a lot for divorces. So the divorces are in the civil cases. So if you're looking for a family divorce, uh, that's where you're going to want to look. And then we also have um, criminal records. Um, these include police records like jail registers and mug books. Um, all of our mug books up to 1940 are digitized and online on the Internet Archive. Um, they start in the 1860s. And they are my favorite thing in our collection. I'm just going to do a quick segue into them, um, a tangent, because, uh, you know, are you going to find someone you're related to in the mug books? You might, actually. One of our historians we work with has found someone uh, he was related to in the mug books in the 1880s. He was a horse thief. Um, but these things are really just lovely. Um, they're beautiful pieces of history because the ones, especially from the 1860s, 1870s, 1880s, they are, they have photographs in them, right? So it's like a photo, it's your mugshot, and then it has your details of your crime and a description of who you are. And then it also says um, what ended up happening to you. Like, did you go to jail? Did you have a, a, a court case? Um, but they're really gorgeous photographs of people who weren't normally pho photographed at that time. So I really encourage you to go check them out on our internet archive page. Um, you're going to see people of color. You, you don't normally see a lot of photos of people of color in these early days of photography. Um, but you're going to see people like just regular everyday people in their street clothes. So it's not the folks normally you see from that time period. They're in their best clothes, getting their photo taken out of portrait studio. These are just regular everyday folks. Um, and it's just really cool to see what they looked like and what their clothing looked like. And from a sociological perspective to see who's getting arrested for what types of crimes. Um, they're really neat. So anyway, history nerds, check those out. Um, in addition to those types of records for criminal stuff, we have criminal um, court case records back to 1850, up to the 1950s. And then the next thing that people use all the time are, are immigration records. So you may not know, I didn't know when I started working here that um, from 1850 to 1955, when you became a citizen, it was done at the county level, at least here in Sacramento County. I don't know if that's like everywhere, but here in Sacramento County, if you lived here and you became a citizen while you lived here, you did that at the county level through whatever court was there at the time. Um, the Superior Court started in 1879. So anything after 1879 is Superior Court. For that, it's the District Court. Um so we've got declarations of intent and your um, oath, your petition and your oath. So we've got the full records and like the archives, like the nat national archives, state archives don't have these. We have the only copies. It's kind of incredible. We get a lot of people asking for um, Italian ones lately um, because you can become a dual citizen with Italy. So we fulfill immigration record uh, requests all the time. And we actually have all of them digitized. So they're not online because there's just a lot of them and we haven't had the resources to put them online, but they're already digitized. So if you need one, we can very easily get it to you. And I am appointed by the Superior Court of California to provide um, them to you certified. So they're the real deal. Um, <laughs> pardon me. Death records. We got lots of death records dating back to 1849 up to around 1980. This includes wills that were filed with Sacramento County. Um, coroner's records, those go up from 1849 to the 1970s. And um, cemetery plot maps and burial indexes. 
And we also have um, funeral home records and other cemetery records. So if you can't necessarily find where the person is buried, um, we have those funeral home records, which often say where the person is buried. Um, same with the coroner's records. Those are a really good place to look for what happens after the person dies. Um, I have helped someone from the East Coast who wasn't sure where their dad was buried. And um, I was able to find that information just looking at the coroner record. Um, they usually say where the person is buried. So, you know, a lot of these records help point you to other places you may not have thought to look. Um, the other records we get a lot of requests for that are very helpful for genealogy are property records. And we have so many property records. Um, we have assessor map books and tax rolls. Our assessor map books for the county and city are both digitized and online up through 1925. Um, so those are really, really great resource for seeing if your ancestors lived in and purchased property in Sacramento County. The Sacramento County deed books, um, the, the city deed books start in 1849 uh, and go up to the 80s. Um, mostly to the 50s, but there's some extras beyond that. The county records, um, 1870 and before that, are missing. Uh, they never came to us. We don't know what happened to them before that. Um, they may have just been destroyed or lost. Who knows? Um, so those are just gone, which is unfortunate. Uh, but we've got everything after 1870, and that's for the whole county. We also have some uh, assessor map books that are specific to Folsom and to Galt. So if you're doing genealogy there, uh, we've got those. Um, the roles, the assessor roles, um, those coincide with the map books in that they list um, the person, they list people alphabetically and what their property taxes, personal or real property taxes were and what uh, where they owned property. So if you don't know where your ancestor owned property, you look at those and it'll tell you. Uh, if you do know, you can look at the map books and those are, um, those are organized by property. So like block by block in the city of Sacramento. Um, and all of those map books are online on the internet archive. And marriage records. We have very few marriage records. Um, we do not have marriage certificates. I should also say we don't have um, death certificates. You have to get those from the county recorder's office. Same with birth certificates and marriage certificates. So all of those things, you have to get them from the county coroner, not the county coroner, the county recorder. Um, the marriage records we do have, we have a certificate index that's um, from 1849 to 1916 and affidavits and a licensed stub book and a register. So we don't have the actual certificates, but from that time period, we do have like basically lists of who got married. Um, and then the register of voters. Uh, this isn't used often, <clears throat> but it is a good, it's a good place to look if you, your family didn't own property, right? Because, or they didn't have like a divorce or, you know, something like that, or they didn't naturalize here. Like there's a regular old person who doesn't own their house. Um, they probably registered to vote. And so from 1866 to 1914, we've got those um, voter rolls. We actually have them. Um, those are our historic ones. We actually have them up until today. Um, but yeah, so those are a great place to look. And they're cool because they usually say where the person is from. So like they'll say, you know, this person registered to vote this date and they are originally from Italy, you know, something like that. Um, so they and they give their birth date and they give their naturalization date. So even if you can't find other records, um, this is another example of where you could find a lot of information in um, an un, a surprising source. Um, so that really covers what we use most for government records in genealogy here. Um, I'm gonna move on to the private collections we have that people use a lot. Um, city directories are huge. If you have never used a city directory, these are the best things ever. I'm gonna just walk you through what they are if you don't know. Um, they're kind of like a phone book, uh, except they don't usually have phone numbers, um, but they include so much information about a person. We have them from 1849 to 1990 for the city of Sacramento. 
We also have um, a few what they call rural ones, which are more for the outlying areas of Sacramento, like me here in Rio Linda, um, like the, the more rural areas. And we have some books for that from the 30s, 40s, 50s, um, but not very many. So the city directories, um, they're catalog, uh, they're organized by, all right, part of them is organized by name, last name. And uh, so the listing for a person will have their name, their address, where they work, sometimes the address of where they work, what they do for a living, their spouse's name. And then the earliest, earliest ones, like 1849 to early 1850s, we'll say where they came from. So like came from Ireland, came from Missouri. Um, and I'll also sometimes say whether they rented or owned their property. And um, they also include like a classifieds ad, uh, not classified. Well, yeah, classified ads, but also business listings. So, you know, you're looking for um, bricklayers. There's going to be a bricklayer section. There's a coal section. Um, and then starting in 1914 um, or 1913, excuse me, uh, they have a reverse address listing. So if you are tracing a property and you want to know everyone who lived in that property, you can look it up by the address and you can look through the years and find everyone who lived at that house. Or if say, you know, you think your parents lived in this house in the forties, you can look it up and you can look it up by the address and find it that way. Um, that's really useful for people doing property research. Um, and the classified ads are really great, especially in the early ones. Um, just really pretty ads for various businesses. Um, they're really great. We have them digitized um, almost completely. And we are working with um, a volunteer and some interns to get them online since they're used so often. Um, we're really prioritizing getting them online. Right now we have I think 1849 to 1903 online. And that again is at the internet archive on our internet archive page. And you can just flip through them like a book. They are just really fabulous. Um, okay, so then we also have funeral home logs, which I mentioned, um, those will mostly tell you when a person, a deceased person was taken in by the funeral home. Um, but it'll also say when they died, um, sometimes like who, um, like who the family member representing them is, and then where they're buried. Um, and I think sometimes they also list cause of death. Um, okay, so then we've got lots and lots and lots of newspapers. Um, we have a complete run of the Sacramento Bee. However, you don't need to come in and look at it because you can look at it through your, using your Sacramento Public Library library card. Um, I'm sure you all know this. If you do not know this, I'm going to tell you um, on the library's website here, you can access the B completely digitized keyword searchable from 1857 till today. And it's the greatest thing ever. Um, it is so useful. It is so fabulous. Uh, it is so much better than having to use the card catalog index for the B that we have. Um, it's just great. And sometimes folks um, find that the, the, the scans like aren't great. You know, maybe you're having a hard time reading a word here and there. You wanna see a better version of a picture. That's when you contact us because we have the original. We can just snap a photo of it and send it to you. Um, or you can come in and look at it and see it in its original form where it's in you know pristine shape for the most part. Um, but that is an amazing resource. We love you for that Sacramento Public Library. Um, the other newspapers we have, we have the Sacramento Union. Um, we have Themis, which was like a literary uh, newspaper. We've got the Daily Recorder, which was uh, concentrated on local government. And uh, we have um, uh, the Observer, which was a black owned newspaper and Mom Guess What, and many, many other gay newspapers. Mom Guess What was one of the first gay newspapers here. We've got a whole bunch of gay newspapers here. Um, and then a lot of uh, Gold Rush era newspapers from around um, the Gold Rush region, like the gold mining region. Um, we also have the Alta Cal uh, Daily Alta, which was um, California's first newspaper that was published in San Francisco. We've got that. Um, 
and Sacramento Star, Sacramento Transcript. We have a lot of early newspapers, um, but the only ones that are keyword searchable and online or have indexes are the B and the Union. Um, the Union, oh, no, that's not true. The Transcript is online too. Um, okay, write this down if you don't know about it. The California Digital Newspaper Collection. That's where you're going to find the Sacramento B, um, the Sacramento Trans, I'm sorry, not the B, the Sacramento Union and the Transcript. Um, the Union started in 1851, I think, and the Transcript was like 50 to 52. So those are going to be um, your earliest newspapers. The Union is online digitized through 1923. It, it gets updated as public domain updates. Um, that's a really great resource. It's also keyword searchable. You don't need a card. You don't need a library card or anything to research it. Um, but we do have the original Sacramento unions at our office as well. Um, okay, then we have yearbooks. We've got over a thousand yearbooks from schools all over the county. Um, they are not digitized, but you are welcome to come in and check them out. Not check them out, literally, but like look at them. We don't check things out. You know that. I already told you that. Um, okay. So then we've got a few photo collections that people use a lot for genealogy. Probably the biggest is the Eugene Hepting collection. This is an incredible collection. Um, Eugene Hepting was a photographer and bicyclist. Um, he was in the Capital City Wheelman. He was um, really involved in like biking, early bicycling um, in Sacramento. And so he, uh, his claim to fame really and why he is, revered today is that he on his bike rode all around Sacramento from the 1910s to the 1950s and just took pictures of the streets and the buildings so like he'd stop at an intersection take a picture from all corners um, take a picture up a street take a picture of individual houses and buildings so from the 10 1910s to the 1950s um, it's possible we have a picture of your house because of him or if you want to see what was at K Street and 7th Street, you can see that because of him. I mean, he is just, you know, great guy. Thanks. Thanks, Eugene Hepting. Uh, so those are used a lot for people who are trying to find their house, their grandparents' house, um, their, you know, a, an ancestor's business. Another guy that took a lot of photos in town was Michael Benning. He majority took class photos, um, school photos, portraits, and like sports photos, but people find their family members in those a lot as well. And then the Sacramento Bee photo archive that I mentioned before, it's mostly from the 50s to the 90s. We're getting more and more um, digital stuff from the last 20 years or so. And we do have a small number of glass plate negatives from the 30s, 20s, 30s, and 40s, but very, very few. Um, we have negatives and photographs. Um, so yeah, if your ancestor was in the B, um, we've got a photo of them probably. Okay, so online. I've talked about online. Uh, I've talked about online Ar archive of California. That's where you're going to find um, collection guides, finding aids to the collections that have been processed and cataloged fully. Um, it's a very small fraction of what we have here, there in the, the office, but um, it's a good start. And um, a lot of our government records are cataloged there. You can search and see, you can search like the coroner's records and find the name of someone. Um, and then our website, we have a photo and artifact database. Uh, so you can look up the photos and the artifacts in our collection. Um, I mentioned we've got millions of photographs. We do, um, but there's only around 30,000 digitized. So it's a drop in the bucket, but again, it's a good start. Um, there's also an old city cemetery plot map on our website that is super cool. Um, you can use it to look up people by name um, and see where they're buried, like where their plot is in the old city cemetery. You can also look it up by race, by how they died, by when they died. So you can get like a lot of interesting information that way. And then the Internet Archive, that is where we host the majority of our digitized um, archival records. We have like 1,400 maps up there dating back to pre-Sacramento, like Rancho maps, um, all our mug books and jail registers, all the assessor map books, a bunch of oral histories from, um, gosh, all sorts of people. We've got Sacramento traditional jazz oral histories, um, Japanese oral histories, Natomas. 
um, a lot of something called the ethnic survey, which was done in the 80s, uh, 70s and 80s. Um, so a lot of oral histories and then um, digitized films and court indexes. We have a lot of court indexes digitized there. So let's go to archive.org and find us. Um, just search for Center for Sacrament History and we'll pop right up. So I'm going to do a quick little case study um, to show you how you find information about one person using the many different collections. So we're going to just go through quickly and see the types of records that we have, um, keeping in mind that this isn't from the Charles Lowers file. This is um, the, the records I'm going to show you are from probably a dozen different collections. And so someone before I worked here went through and did this research on this guy and found all these records that tell a pretty complete story of his life. Um, he's not the most relatable person. He's, you know, a wealthy white business owner. Um, we'd love to do one on someone a little more relatable, um, but it's hard to find records, um, like a lot of records on one person uh, to, to give us an example of how many records you can find. So we uh, are stuck with Charles Lures for a while now, but we're hoping to move on to someone new. So we start out with him coming here from our favorite place, Prussia, uh, who knows where he actually came from um, in 1871. And so this is his naturalization um, from 1871. Uh, so this is from our naturalization records. Um, this is 1872, pardon me. And then uh, in 1873, two years after it comes here, he's listed in the 1873 city directory. So you can see him here, it says Lures, C-A, that's Charles A, and then C-L-K is clerk. And I should note that at the beginning of all of these city directories, there's a key to these um, abbreviations they use. So C-L-K is clerk, he's working as a clerk somewhere. Uh, that next thing is resides at the east side of 3rd Street between L and M. So he doesn't get a full address. We just have an idea of where he lived. Um, Lures Henry below that is his brother and he's a grocer. And so the next time we see him, uh, Charles Lures in the city directory, he's gonna be working as a grocer as well. So moving on, here is that register of voters. Um, it's huge, it's hard to see. So I'll just point out, you know, it has his full name, Charles August Lures. It says where he came from, Prussia, uh, where he lives, and then when he naturalized, where he naturalized, and the date of his registration. So you get a lot of information from this one little thing that can help you go to other places to find more information. Uh, here he is again in the city directory just a few years later, and he's got his own business, Hall & Lures. Um, he was a wholesale grocer. He um, had a building in Old Sack which is uh, still there. I not I can't remember if it's a reconstruction or if it's a remodel, but um, that building is there, pretty front and center in um, Old Sacramento. And so this is from the 1876 city directory. He's got a full page ad, pretty impressive. And then he gets married. And this is an example of uh, the certificate index I was mentioning. So all it shows is that the people got married. It doesn't tell you the date. Um, they are, by oh yeah it doesn't say the date they are they are by um year so you know they got married then but it's not super specific here i think some of them might be more specific but this particular one of 1880 is not so he married anna c kohler here in sacramento um and then here's his building um during uh um when they closed in 1915 it changed um hands many times. And at one point it was Enterprise Hotel, which we have this cool picture of. Um, and so, yeah, during the time of uh, the West End of Sacramento, before it became uh, redeveloped into old Sacramento, it was this hotel. And then uh, the picture at the top is what it looks like more or less today. And that picture is from right after redevelopment. So it was um, restored. So I think it's the original building just with some restoration done to it. And then here's more city directories, which, you know, I love. Um, this is an example of him in both places, in the business directory and in the people directory. So in the people side of it, on the right, you've got him. He's got his full name, Charles A. Lures. And then it says where he works, Hall and Lures Company. That's cool. 
You don't know if he owns it or if he just works there, but, um, and then it says his residence, 1237 P Street. Then if you go to the business listings of the same city directory and look under groceries wholesale, there's Hall and Lures. And it tells you their um, address, 908-916 2nd Street. Um, and then we have photographs of his house on P Street. Um, and this is photographs of like him and his family at his house, playing croquet, I guess, um, taking a carriage ride. Uh, this house is not there anymore. It's now a parking lot, but it was nice. Um, and then this is, this is the city map book, the assessor map book I was talking about where it shows you block by block who owned the properties. So you see there in the upper right, he owned um, part of that plot. Um, at some point it got uh, divided and someone else owns the left-hand side of it. But um, these are a little weird to read. Ignore the 21 in the top because that's the page number, but... Um, so 12 and 13, 12th Street is at the bottom. 13th Street runs horizontally along the top. And then O runs vertically and P runs vertically on the other side. So he's at P and 13th Street. Um, so then, you know, he dies. Um, he hasn't died yet, but he's he knows it's coming and he writes his will. And we've got his will recorded uh, with the county recorder's office in 1901. And then um, he does, in fact, die. And here's his obituary from the union. Um, he also had an obituary in the B. And then uh, we've got his cemetery deed book that his, uh, or his deed in the cemetery deed books um, that his uh, wife uh, purchased. And then we've got his probate, which is huge because he had a lot of money and property. And so... That is, yeah, just like a quick little tutorial on the many, many places you can find information about a person and, and tell a story of their life. Um, this probate record would have tons of stuff in it about what properties he owned, who his heirs were, who his executor was, you know, it could tell you a lot about that person. So finally, how do you do research here? Um, we are open to the public only on Tuesdays and Wednesdays between 9 and 4 p.m. And you have to make an appointment. Um, we don't accept walk-ins. We don't accept same-day appointments because we have to pull stuff for you. We have to make sure we have what you need. Um, if we do not have what you need, we will suggest who we think does. Like we very often send people over to the Sacramento room there at the public library, um, suggest other resources nearby. Um, we never leave you hanging. We always send you somewhere else if we don't have it. So to make an appointment, emailing us is the best way because we're going to have questions. Um, we conduct a reference interview to find out exactly what you need and make sure we have it. So it usually is easier through email um, because we can look stuff up that we can't do while we're talking to you on the phone. But call us if you want to call us. That's fine. Um, so then if you make an appointment with us, you come in and you're going to fill out a registration form and sign in. Um, we have you lock up your bags and your jackets because people steal stuff. And not that we don't trust you, but you know, it's happened. Um, we have cameras in the room um, and we have indeed caught people stealing stuff and it's one of a kind stuff. So we can't take any chances. So uh, sorry about that. And we let you have pencils, but you cannot have pens. Again, one of a kind stuff. You can erase a pencil. You cannot erase a pen. Um, you can take notes. You can have your phone to take pictures um, or your cam, like you can bring in a camera laptop, like that kind of stuff is totally great to just like take a quick picture of something so you don't have to write it all down. And then we pull the material for you. So you tell us what you're looking for. We talk it out. We figure out like what, um, if you know exactly what you want, we just grab it for you. If you're not quite sure, we'll have a conversation about it and we will figure it out. And then we'll go in the back and pull stuff for you. And then you go through it and we sit there doing our work um, and we are there for you. So um you know, you interrupt us at any point. You're not interrupting us. We're there for you. Uh, we're doing other stuff, but you ask questions and we will go get more stuff for you. And um, that's how it works. And that is my email. And if you have reference questions, you can email csh at cofsacramento.org. And you can email me with any questions and we look forward to helping you. And um, that's it. So I'm open for questions. 
Okay, uh, great. Well, thank you very much. And uh, we definitely have some questions already oh. queued up. I'm going to uh, let people unmute themselves so they can uh, they can talk as well. Let's start with the uh, most recent question, which is uh, relevant to what you were just talking about um, from Donna Buxton. Can you bring a portable scanner and how long are the appointments? You can bring a portable scanner. Um, you can bring a flatbed, not one that you feed stuff through. Um, yes, you can. And appointments are as long as you want them to be. I mean, our appointment blocks are 9 a.m. to 12 and then 1 p.m. to 4. And so we make you take a lunch break because we need to take a lunch break. Um, and, you know, a lunch break is good. So you can come in and you can... You don't have to come in at nine. You can say, I'm going to come in at 10 and be there till 12, or I'm going to come in at 10. I'm going to take my lunch break. I'll be there till four. You can do both all day. You can be there all day. You can come back the next day. You know, it's, it's really up to you, but uh, we do have them in like four, four hour increments. Okay. Let's go back to um, the first question, which I think you've pretty much answered, but it, it's from uh uh, it's from Sandy Gardner. She said, I would love to come down someday and do research on my home property in Sacramento County. Is that possible? And, yes. <laughs> yeah. 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 So what I, like I said, yeah, just call us or email us and you can make an appointment and we'll talk to you about it and see what we might have and what exactly you're looking for and figure out what we have for you. And then, yeah, you can have an appointment and come on in. So Katie Baker, um, she uh, her question is, are the collections considered to be in the public domain? Everything that is a government record is in the public domain because it's a public record. So yes, all of our government records are in the public domain. Um, beyond that, no. Um, private things are not in the public domain. Uh, I think 1928 is the year now that public domain starts. So anything before that is. So like photographs from before that or maps before that, you are free to access and use, you're free to access all of it, but you're free to use it, you know, for whatever reason you want. Um, after that, you have to get um, permission to use it or whatever. And we charge licensing fees for um, using our film and our photographs in publications. Okay, next question from Ann Burroughs. She says, I'm interested in the gold rush. Could you comment on your collections in that area? Yeah. Um, well, we have a lot of, um, oops, okay. I saw someone wants my, the researcher email. Let yeah. me put that in the chat really fast while I'm thinking about it. Okay. Um, government documents we've got like everything from that time period. You know, it starts in 1849 when Sacramento was incorporated. So we've got like the breadth of government records, property records, uh, court records, um, you name it. Um, for private collections, we have a small collection of um, photographs, not like photograph, like, like daguerreotypes. Um, and then a small collection of correspondence, um, from people who were in Sacramento at the time. Um, Eleanor McClatchy of the McClatchy family, she collected on that subject and she gave us her private collection of things she collected. So there is um, quite a lot of newspapers we have from the gold rush era and letter sheets, which are, um, and lithographs, which are just like images drawn of the um, gold rush. So it's like, we don't have a lot of private stuff from the gold rush, but we have, a lot of government stuff from Gorge. Okay, and then uh, Bev Lawrence asked, and I think this was right around the time you were talking about death records, and Bev, maybe you would like to clarify the question. Uh, she asked, mm -hmm. where are the records for the years not listed as in collection? Are there some cutoff years, like the federal census of not being released until a certain date? Yeah, um, usually the records we don't have after a certain date are with the originating um, entity. So like with the coroner's records, the coroner will have the records after 1977. 
Um, I don't know if it's because there is a cutoff, like it can't be made publicly accessible. And so they haven't given it to us. Um, there's not a lot of great um, like records management schedules with the county. <laughs> um, and so we just kind of get stuff when we get it sometimes. Um, there was a lot of stuff given to us in the 70s and 80s and then not a lot after that. So, you know, whether legally we can have those or not, I don't know. Um, yeah. Uh, Bev, did, did that uh, did that answer your question? Did you want to clarify anything on that? Um, yeah, I, I'm not sure. You can hear me. I guess my laptop's working here. Um, hear yeah, I just noticed that like the city building permits go to 1970. The mm -hmm. personal property rolls go to 1941. All these different hop stops of, of dates and whether it's just like city directories kind of stopped being kept. So right. obviously you wouldn't have them past a certain. So it's just it's some interesting dates of intervals of time that you have things and it seems like they would be documents that would have been kept somewhere but like you said the coroner has them still at the coroners right. and yeah they it's wanted really to have space and so they dumped the documents to you to create yeah, more space pretty much i think um <laughs> it is up to the agencies themselves if they want to give us the stuff like they don't have to Okay. Um, in some cases, I think they do, but, you know, with record retention schedules, in some cases, they have to keep certain records, and in other cases, they can get rid of them, and if they're deemed historically interesting, and they think of us, we get them, you know, um, sometimes they don't know about us, and they just throw stuff away, which is horrifying, um, <laughs> So, you know, yeah. So like, why do we only have county assessor books up to 1939? I don't know. You know, what did they, where are the rest of them? The assessor has them, I'm assuming, I'm hoping, you know, um, it's, yeah, it's really just like up to them what they want to give us. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Hey, we've gone through our backlog of questions. Who has a new question? Don't be shy. This is your opportunity. <laughs> Dave, I have a question. Okay, go ahead. Um, do you happen to have, know if you happen to have anything regarding the military, the cavalry that were out here in various forts? In the, no, we don't. That would be with don't. the federal, like the National Archives would have that. Okay. Or the okay. state archives if they were a state entity. Well, no, um, I'm thinking U.S. military. Yeah. yeah, then that would be with the National Archives. Okay. And there's, um, if you don't know already, there's a National Archives branch in um, San Bruno, and they have the California stuff. Ah, okay. Yeah. Um, we do not have records of Sacramento orphanages. Um, I think you'd have to go to them directly. Um, again, the they're so private. Um, they just don't give us that kind of stuff. We have... Um, we have juvenile court records and we have insane commitment records, but we're not allowed to share them. Um, if people want to access them, they can only do it through a court order, which seems insane to me because they're from like the 1890s. You know, it's like those people are long dead. So I'm hoping that that um, is a rule that changes. And I have another question that sure. uh, I, if um, there is an organization um, an arts organization that I belong to. Mm -hmm. And they, people, we can't keep the records that we've been keeping, the pictures and the mm -hmm. whatever. Uh, is there any organization that would like something about a quilting group, a painting group uh, yeah. that, that covers the state? Who would that be? Oh, it covers the, the whole state? Well, it, it's open. Uh, well, I'm thinking of a local quilt group more than anything, but the painting mm -hmm. group that I'm thinking of um, is uh, does cover the, the state, the people from all over the state and out of the state. Okay. For something that's statewide, I would go to the state library. Okay. Um, for something that is specific to our area, we would be into it. You know, we've got lots of groups records, the Penn Women, um, the Tuesday Club, 
the Camellia Society, we accept records from societies and organizations like that. Okay, if it was a, a local group like an Auburn group. Auburn is Placer County. I would check with Placer County's. Archive. Okay, that's what I was thinking. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, um, I see someone. Okay, I see a couple questions in the chat. And one of them is the URL for Internet Archive. And I just put it in the chat. Um, and I'm going to get to Donna's after I explain. Don Hayden? Oh, that's so weird. That's my dad's name. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. <laughs> Hi, Don Hayden. Um, okay, so yeah, so um the Internet Archive page is if you scroll through it, you'll see that we have some things in collections, like the maps are all together, the film is all together, the jail registers are all together, um, certain um oral histories are all together. But there's a keyword search bar up at the top, and you can just use that to keyword search, and that'll bring up all the different types of records we have that are what you're looking for. Um, and then Donna, for your grand, your great grandpa, um, if you email us, we can look in the city directories um, and see if he's in there. And it'll, it'll likely say where his, if he owned a business. And you know, I don't think newspapers.com includes um, that I don't think they include the whole run of the Sacramento Bee. I, I don't, don't think they do either. I don't think they do. That's so, why, so, yeah. Yeah, Sacramento Public Library, come to our website for yep. access to the entire Sacramento Bee. Uh, do a search for, a uh, search for, um, uh, just try searching on ice cream to see what ads pop up. Um, uh, it, it, any, anything you know, it, let's see, you don't know the name or locations Name locations would help. Those are things you could mm -hmm. search on, but still you could search on on ice cream parlor and things like that. And you might very well uh, pop up an ad for his place. Or his name. Yeah. But yeah, the city directories, you know, we can just look up ice cream parlors or we can look up his name and his, his name might say, you know, which business he owned. Yeah, I think you'll almost certainly find something. Mm -hmm. Okay, what else do we have down here? Okay, some nice thank yous. Yeah, I think it's been a very, I've certainly enjoyed it. This is exactly what, what I wanted for myself. <laughs> uh, this Good. is really helpful to me in doing my job. Good. And we're really, really, really passionate about doing this. So, so you know, when you have a question for us, we get excited trying to help you answer it. You know, it's fun for us, too. <laughs> we like to try to solve puzzles, your little mysteries yeah. with you. <laughs> Great puzzles. Yeah. Yeah. Well, who else has a question? We do have some more time for questions. If we're at a pause, I will make my shameless plug for our oh, yeah. uh, next month's uh, presentation. Uh, next month, um, April 27th, our presentation is Shaken Out the Smiths, Researching Common Search Names. That's presented by Nancy Calhoun. So um, a lot of us have common surnames. It doesn't have to be Smith. There are lots of surnames that are really common, and a lot of them are, are more common than, than people would think. So I think that could be helpful to just about everybody. Um, and also, uh, we should mention um, something coming up, Family History Week, April 1st to 6th. 2024. It's called Digging for Family Treasures this year. Um, it is um, uh, it, it is uh, offered by um, the, uh, the the state library, the, the 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 state archives, the Center for Sacramento History, um, Sacramento Public Library has some uh, has some some talks uh, during it. That's on. Uh, Wednesday at 11 at the Central Library and um, and at uh, four o'clock at Carmichael. Um, we'll be giving some talks at the Central Library. It'll be focused on the Sacramento Room. Um, 
there's just a lot of stuff. Let me put the uh, the URL where so that you can uh, check out the whole uh, uh, the whole thing. On, I'll on be the giving website. this exact same talk, but in person twice on Friday <laughs> the 5th as part of this. Um, but when I do it in person, I bring out all of the Charles Lohr's records so you can look at them. So, you know, if you want to do this again, but in person. <laughs> And that's a great place to 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 visit. And uh, is there going to be a tour of your place? Oh yeah, yeah, we're going to do well? a tour. Yeah, a that's tour a of our storage tour. vault. Yeah. So if you could do that, you should definitely, you should all definitely do that. And and I've got the URL there, so you can uh, you can check out uh, the uh, the web page for it with all the information, and uh, you can download the uh, all the, all the uh, schedules of different talks. There are a lot of a lot of talks um, on Monday and Saturday and all through the week. So there's just, um, there's enough to keep all of you busy all week if you're interested. Yes, and the Auburn archives are going to be open too. I know mm -hmm. Thursday because I'm sitting there, but that's right. <laughs> I don't know where else. And, and they have a lot of gold rush stuff. That's right. Great, thank you. Yeah, there's. Uh, I'm. I have not mentioned even a portion of what's available. So yeah, and anybody else who knows something about uh, uh, what's uh, what's being presented or or has a, a, a stake in something that's being presented, please uh, let us know right now. Okay, we'll definitely check that out. Um, any uh, any more questions? All right. Thank you, Don. We appreciate you coming. Yeah, thanks. I'm putting our address in the chat too. We're off of Richards Boulevard, just north of the railway uh, rail yards. And I'm going to post the uh, handout one more time. I assume the handout has all of that information and more. Yep. I'm going to post that one more time. And if anyone has trouble downloading it, you can always email me and I will send it to you. And this presentation has been recorded. It'll uh, be posted uh, sometime uh, next uh, week and it is being left up indefinitely. Thank you, Kim. No, sure. There is the link to our uh, YouTube page. Um, that's where you'll find all of our genealogy uh, presentations that uh, we're that that we still have up. Uh, there are a number of them still up from previous presentations, and uh, then our email address is at the bottom there. Contact at saclibrary.org. Any final questions? Last chance. Okay. Well, thank you all for joining us, and thank you, Kim, for a great presentation. Thank you. We'll see you all next month. Bye.